Hey guys, um, it's Carrie. <clears throat> I just made this beautiful pour, uh, and I videotaped it, and it was on this nice board, and then I dropped it while I was carrying it to my little drying rack. So, I'm going to have to redo it. Uh, I did make this one specifically for beginners. Uh, the first video, uh, I showed how to mix your paints, what kind of medium to use. So, uh, I just used a heavy bodied ultramarine, that's this color here, Saxes. I used the heavy bodied acrylic um, ultra, or the Sax, the violet. I used um, Sargent liquid metal, silver, and my black and white also is Saks heavy bodied. So, uh, because heavy bodied paints are really thick, I do a um, one paint to three part uh, pouring medium. And for pouring medium, you can use Floetrol, um, it's pretty common. Uh, you can use pouring medium that is specific for pouring medium. Floetrol is not specific for, uh, for art, it's more specific for contractors. Uh, to help to thin out the lines of uh, brush marks or just thin it out a little bit for air, air gun for painting on that way. So, um, Floetrol works so it is a great pouring medium. It's just, uh, it comes out white but it dries clear so it's, it works good. Um, I've been fooling around trying different pouring mediums. Um, I, I've tried Sargent pouring medium. Uh, when I first bought this for the whole gallon was thirty dollars, but they're up to fifty-seven now. So I don't know what the, what the price jump is about. Um, it's pretty thin though, so if I was using the Sargent Art pouring medium, I would use glue with it just to thicken it up. Um, and that, then I started noticing a little bit of cracking or crazing in my uh, final paintings. So I have since added Liquidex to my recipe of pouring medium, and I also add Liquidex to my house paint. Now I use house paint, one part paint to one part pouring medium, or not pouring medium, I just use Floetrol for the painting. Just use one part paint, one part Floetrol, and about 10% of it, oh, 10% I add a little bit of Liquidex just to prevent the, the crazing, and that's, that's helped so far. Um, so with my specific recipe, I use I mix it up in big in a big batch. I use uh, two liters of Floetrol, one liter of the Sargent Arts pouring medium, one liter of the Liquidex pouring medium, and about half of that amount, so two cups worth of the glue, just to help thicken it up a little bit. So that's what I used. I used that to mix up these paints until they were the right consistency. Uh, so to know the right consistency, you would pick up your stick. Um, when you poured the paint off it would make like a little ribbon in the in the paint that would dissolve after a second or two you want to be able to see the little ribbon but then you want it to be gone in one or two seconds okay so that's that's the basics um i have a little three ounce cup here that i will use i poke two holes in it with these uh, push pins and then i covered the holes with tape so that so that prevents the um, paint from coming out, and then we just take it off at the end. Um, I've already put silicone in all these colors, and I have to say from the last painting that I just did on this, I do not like silicone anymore. Um, my preferred method now for making cells is dimethicone. I just think it makes nicer cells. But there's already silicone in these, so I'll just stick with the silicone. I'm going to layer my colors. So I have the ultramarine blue is going to go in first. Now, I don't have much black in here, that's on purpose. Um, I just want a little bit of black in here. It helps with cell definition. Uh, in fact, I have so little black in there that I just finished it. So, just add a little bit more. And just one drop of dimethicone. For making cells on your paintings, uh, silicone, you know, uh, a lot of people use silicone. It's probably the most common thing that people use. Um, and like I said, I'm just not, as, I don't like it as much as the dimethicone. 
Uh, you could find dimethicone online. Um, on Amazon's where I got it, uh, dimethicone. Uh, I'm going to get it clear here. but Okay, so dimethicone, and then there's the silicone, the treadmill lubricant silicone. You just put in 100% silicone, you'll, you'll get those. Same with the dimethicone, just search up dimethicone on Amazon. Uh, coconut milk serum is another option. Um, it's not my favorite option, but its number one ingredient is dimethicone. So in theory, it should be similar to dimethicone. In practice, I have found that I'm not really a big fan of it. Um, but personal lubricant is another <coughs> option to sell to, to create cells. And I prefer this <coughs> over the coconut milk serum. Sorry, so I'll just continue on with my layering. I'll go on to silver. And my purple. And just a little bit of white. So this whole surface is going to be covered in white. I don't need a lot of white in here. It's just kind of just a bit. Back to the ultramarine. A little bit of black. And black, even if you don't want black in your in your product or your, your painting, I mean, um, you still want to add black because black is going to add a little bit of cell definition. Now I want to do one more layer. And I pour my paint on the side of the cup. And the reason I do that is to keep the colors separate. You can see how they are um, separate there. That's my preferred way. Some people pour from up and they kind of get their paints mixing in, in the cup. Um, that's just not my preferred way. So, I mean, you just do what you like, what you think works best for you. And then what? You know, everybody's preferences are different. Mine are more like, I like clean lines for most things. Oh, whoops. But for some, some paintings, I like soft lines. And this painting will have soft lines. And you'll see what I mean by soft lines. Um, with my house paint that I use, one part paint to one part Floetrol, that's what's going to be going down on this base layer. Um, I also add a little bit of water to it to thin, to make it a little bit thinner. And the reason I do that is to get to kind of more of the softer edges, uh, or and I get floating cells or whatever you want to call them. Um, so I'll show you that as I get this paint on. The only problem with adding paint onto the, or adding water into the paint, is that you have a little bit less working time to get your painting done. The yeah, edges dry pretty pretty quickly. I get my gloves on. The other thing, um, Floetrol is pretty bad for making or for producing little blobbies. Um, I should have put like a, when I was pouring it into my paint, I should have put like a nylon over top of it to prevent the blobs from coming in and I will do that in the future. Um, but this one, this particular one I didn't and so I just, as I'm tipping it, I watch for blobs and I take them off as I see them. And I already see one, so I'm going to plop it off. And just look how big that is. It's crazy. I think this is, I think I got a lot of blobs because of the colder weather. Um, I ordered Floetrol a little while ago. I got it. It had been frozen. Uh, when it unthawed, I, you know, I opened it up to use it. And it was in clumps that I could not... I could not stir back together. So I'm assuming that uh, it is cold sensitive and doesn't react well to um, cold and just kind of binds up. That's my theory on it anyway. Oops, I don't want to do that. My edge is clean. Okay. I should have put a new pad down, um, but I didn't. And I probably end up having to put more paint. Put 
tweezers work well for this, for taking these blobs off. Probably better than a toothpick. I had tweezers somewhere. I don't really know where they went. Just going to add a bit more paint. I've seen some people use like little paper edge catchers so that the paint doesn't drip, drip off. Um, I'm sure you'd use a lot less paint if you did that. I just haven't done that yet, but at some point I'll probably try that. Paint gets expensive. Not, ba not as bad if you're using house paint. I was so busy looking for blobs, I was ignoring my paint. Probably poured too much off this one side. Now this little side is having troubles. So I'm just tapping here to break the surface tension. Helps to get the paint flowing better. And I don't see how I'm not going to have to add a little bit more. This paint wastage. I should have changed the puppy pad. I would have been able to use the paint that was in there if I had changed it. And now I poured on way too much paint. I'm just making sure all my edges are covered. And they appear to be. Okay. So, I am going to take this canvas and take the cup, tip it up towards the, can the cup. It's in there. Okay, so cup goes on there like that. And then I got paint all over myself. Oh, I just found these these um, aprons on Amazon uh, that I've ordered. They have towels on the side of them for you to wipe your hands. Those will probably get ruined after my first time wearing them with all the paint I'm going to wipe off. But I thought that was a great idea. Okay, so I'm going to take the tape off, off of the, the bottom of the lid here. So you see the paint kind of just coming out from the edges. going in a straight line. There. Alright, already you can see a bunch of cells popping up. I'm just going to tip this back and forth just to get this one line. You see how my color separation? You can see the purple, the white, the blue, the black, and then the silver. That's just my personal preference. Alright, so I'm just doing this once up and down to get the edges off. Then I'll center my paint and then I'll go back and forth in the other directions. Oh, 
Okay, so you see how I've got these long cells here? Um, that is from just stretching so far. So I am going to put the paint back, kind of to center. See now that there's better definition there. Okay, so now I'm just going to go up and down this way. And you can already see a floating cell here. There's going to be some here, probably one right there. Um, that is what I mean by soft edges. I don't know what anybody else calls it. I just call it soft edges or floating cells. Um, this is why I keep my paint just a little bit thinner. I found this out but kind of by accident. Um, I was doing a lot of airbrushing and I still do a lot of airbrushing with my paints. Um, and I was noticing that my house paint on the bottom was just too thick and it was leaving little marks in that didn't completely dry flat. So I started thinning out my paint a little bit more so that I could, so that there wouldn't be any divot marks. And I kept thinning to the point where I got to this consistency and then I kind of discovered this. So I've been just kind of staying with that. Now I am going to use a heat gun even though I have a lot of cells. I just like the way this looks right now and I don't want to, I don't even want any more cells. But I am seeing a little bit uh, the air bubbles pop up and when they pop up they, they come up as white speckles. You will see that most with Floetrol than any other pouring medium. Um, th which is why I've been playing a little bit with my with my own pouring medium mixture. But we need to get rid of air bubbles on the white paint as well as the colored paint. Some more cells did come up. I didn't really want them to. Now I have a lot of uh, little cells. Um, but hopefully I'll be able to stretch them out by going back and forth a few times. Just continuing to stretch this out. My goal is to have this line remain straight. We'll see if I can if I can achieve that. I have my doubts because some of the paint is more um, heavy, so it's going to pull the line down a little bit like in this in this middle area it's thinner than here and here I gotta say I'm liking this one even better than the one that I had made that had fallen Same little section over here with no paint. I like more kind of more minimalistic, even less paint than this would have been nice for me. I seen one one girl on you know YouTube University. Um, that's where I got my degree in port art university of YouTube and the um, textbook city of Kindle. Uh, so, uh, anyway, I was watching one of one of the girls' videos, and I honestly just don't remember which page it was at. Otherwise, I'd give her the credit. Um, but anyway, she was doing she was doing really a minimalistic one. She she covered the canvas in black, and then she um, did a little cup. I don't remember which colors in it, but there weren't very many colors probably just black and one other color and she did a, a cup oops she did a cup on on the the canvas dragged it along and then she did a swipe over top of that and then she took about half of the half of the swipe part and then just took it right off and added more black to that side and it really turned out so pretty it was just like this little strip probably from here to here of some bright colors and mostly black, but I really, really liked that. Now I'm not going to do this too much more. We'll probably just one more, um, you know, I'll finish going this way, I'll come back, I'll go this way, I'll go this way one more time, and then I'll center the paint. You 
you know, I am really liking the silicone in this, this particular painting. Um, I was going to swear off silicone for life, uh, but it looks decent now. The um, last time I, the first painting had some kind of degraded cells and I figured it was from silicone. Uh, but I don't see those at all anymore. The cells are nice and round, the way I like them. Um, they're multi-colored, also the way I like them. And uh, yeah, I don't have any complaints with silicone this time. That's strange how, you know, I didn't use different colors. I didn't use different paint on the bottom. I didn't use different paints for the colors. The only thing I did different is I did a little, instead of going straight, I did a little kind of a zigzag, so maybe that contributed to it. I, I, I don't know. I really don't know. But anyway, I'm liking the results here. My line is re relatively still there, it just moves a little bit. Man, this line would have been almost completely straight. I just had dumped a little more paint right in here. Okay, I'm gonna go this way one more time. And I'm gonna center the paint and call it a call it done. And these corners are not corners, but these effects here that are happening right now, they will continue as the painting is drying. And so in the magic of the film, I'll be able to show you that in a few seconds. For me, it'll be 24 hours, but for you, it'll be seconds um, after I've done this. And uh, yeah. And the key for this is not to go, is, is to be patient. So you don't want to do a like a severe angle like this to get just to get your paint moving. Um, that is a mistake I made in the beginning and my cells would all degrade, they wouldn't stay round, they would be some weird oblong shaped things. Uh, so that was a lesson I learned. Um, you just have to have some patience. This thing is like just covered in cells. Okay, so I'll call that done. Um, I'm going to put it to dry, hopefully don't drop it again. Uh, this one is going in my contest, or not my contest, my draw, I guess you could say. Uh, it's going to be, uh, my draw is going to be uh, like, share, and comment on my Facebook post that you will, that will come up. And um, um, whoever is drawn will get a, a picture of their choosing. It'll be a choice of um, 10 by 20 pictures here. Uh, once he, this one included, a few more. I think there's about five in your choice. Uh, so yeah, so uh, just find me on my Facebook page, The Art of the Poor, uh, P-O-U-R, Art of the Poor, and um, you can see all the other ones I've done. Sign up or share my, my post for um, a chance to win one of these paintings. Um, also, they're for sale, and I will uh, start teaching private classes. Um, I'm just kind of stuck to an oxygen leash, so I'd have to do them in my home. Uh, I will also do large, larger events where I'll make the effort to come out. Uh, so yeah, just find me on the Art of the Poor, any messages, um, uh, Facebook message me, you can find me on Instagram, or just leave a comment here on YouTube. And uh, yeah, I look forward to hearing from you, and I hope you have a good rest of, of your day. And one last thing, if you have any questions about any of my art, um, about how I did it, what techniques I used, so anything to help you make create your own art. I mean, I'm not just about selling art, I'm about teaching and sharing what I've learned along the way, and um, you know, helping helping you all or anybody um, to accomplish pieces that you like. Um, 
I find it a great stress reliever and uh, you know yeah if you have any questions or if there's anything you want me to show you any technique anything um, you know just leave me a message and uh, I, I will let address those uh, requests so thank you for watching and have a good rest of your day